I've got a few pieces of ash that I have stored here, but they're all a bit curved. Quite like to have a straight handle for this axe that I'm doing now. Got some different bits split there. That's some maple. That bit might be maple as well. That's nice and straight. That would make a nice one. That's, that's very long. That's in very nice condition. It's been used a little bit as a some kind of wedge on the writing there. Jay Everson, this one's called. 20 centimetres long. It's probably worn down, I don't know how much. A fair bit, I would have thought. It's, I think it's quite heavy. I'm going to go and weigh it. It weighs 1.6 kilos. I was just went in the kitchen and weighed it. That's a Swedish one. Well, at least I bought it in Sweden, but I think it's a Swedish pattern as well. Anyway, let's have a look. I might take off a little bit of the burr there, just, just to make it so that you can use your hands if you want. It's quite hard steel. It, it does, uh, the file does bite it at least. But uh, I think I might do that differently. I don't know, I'm not going to use a file for that, it takes too long. Is that bit of wood big enough? This might not be big enough actually. Oh, it's a little bit on the skinny side, that one. Right, it'll just do. And these have a very um, kind of closed angle, not quite sure why that is. Well, I looked at one on the museum website last night and that's, it looked like that too, so I'm going to do it like that. People criticise these axes for having thick handled Scandinavian axes, but I think the reason why these small axes have thick handles is because they're used quite a lot as um, tools for planing in Norway, perhaps Sweden too, and it's quite nice that you've got a bit of girth there for directional, making it better directionally. So well, this is a felling axe, so I'm going to go for the nice thin handle on this one. Sharp while I'm working. So a little bit of a split developing here and I think I might just uh, cut down this and put in a piece of wood there to stop it from splitting any further. I don't, I don't think it really matters because you know it doesn't take very much strain at that point really. So I'll just cut that with a saw. It's just a little bit of pine. It gives it strength in the other direction, so it'll just be like a laminate there. And I'll I'll clamp it, I'll glue it and clamp it so the, the split will also glue up. As I say, I don't think really axes get very much um, vibration at this end. I don't think it's really... Uh, I've seen some people sometimes put in wedges and stuff at the end to make a bigger lump there. It's not a bad idea, really. So I'll, I'll glue and clamp that.
of sandpaper there. And it'll be a little bit difficult where there's a kind of grain direction to change. using the dreaded belt sander. I don't normally like to use it because it has a tendency to heat up the edge too hot and then it spoils the temper of the metal. So I'll just do it quickly with that and the diamond hone. Just cut a wedge out of a piece of elm. I don't know if I'm going to get that in or not. Not much space. Yeah, that's alright. We should use a wooden mallet for this. I'm clearing out trees that have been damaged. There were sheep grazing in these pastures, in these woods, uh, some years ago, and they damaged a lot of the trees. I'm just kind of picking them out bit by bit. It's quite cold today, it's uh, <coughs> about minus 12, maybe minus 14. old heart here is rotten, so it's very soft. Just a little bit too cold for bare hands.
glasses are steaming up. That soft core. I missed my mark. <laughs> <laughs> 